Uncharted 4 came out in 2016 on the PS4 and won multiple awards. So today, I will see what the hype is about by getting the Platinum Trophy for it. Now I will be playing the Legacy of Thieves Collection. It is the PS5 version with upgraded graphics and faster load times. It also eliminates all the multiplayer trophies but includes one extra trophy that I will discuss later. I'm going to break down this journey into three steps. Step 1 is to beat the game on crushing difficulty and grab all collectibles. Step 2 is to clean up any remaining trophies left. And step 3 is to complete the game in under 6 hours. So sit back and join me in this journey of getting the Platinum Trophy for Uncharted 4. We begin in the middle of a boat chase and shortly after crashing, we wake up and see a young Nate. He notices some flashing lights through the window and heads towards them. He gets there and we find out that it is his older brother Sam whom he never mentions once throughout the series. Sam is here to help Nate leave the Catholic orphanage for the night as he has a surprise for him. He tracked down their mother's stuff and planned to take it back. We then transition to Nate in prison fighting a member of the cartel. He gets the upper hand on me and knocks me out, ending Nate's career permanently. Mission failed. We get on top of him but get interrupted by Vargas who we are bribing to help us find Captain Henry Avery's treasure. I picked up my first trophy for picking up my first treasure. Nate finds a cross and when Vargas asks us what we found, we lie and tell him that there was nothing. We find Sam and meet Rafe who is helping us with his money and tell them that Vargas wants a cut of the treasure. We get interrupted by the cartel and a fight starts in the laundry room. Once again, Vargas intervenes and when the guards search us, they find the cross. Vargas is upset that we betrayed his trust and demands 25% of the treasure. We all agree and then Rafe stabs him twice and we proceed to leave the prison. During our escape, I got a trophy for performing 10 combo buddy takedowns. We make it to the end where all we need to do is jump but something tragic happens. With Sam gone, Nate escapes the prison. We jump 15 years later and see Nate working a normal job of retrieving items from underwater. Our boss, Jameson, offered us a job to locate a ship but Nate refuses. As we are in Nate's attic, I get a trophy for shooting 4 targets with a toy gun. We head downstairs and have dinner with Elena and tell each other about our days and she encourages Nate to take the job offer. He deflects the conversation by offering to do the dishes by playing some Crash Bandicoot on a PS1 and beating her score. I unfortunately did not beat her score and she rubbed it in my face. Nate then works a late shift and hears someone knocking on the door. After opening the door, Nate finds out that it is Sam and can't believe it since he saw him get shot. Sam explains that he escaped the prison with the assistance of Hector Alcazar. Once outside, Hector demands half of Avery's treasure within 3 months and Sam agrees. Nate tells Sam that their trail with Rafe didn't lead anywhere. Sam shows us a clue that would point us in the right direction, however Nate says that he's done with that lifestyle but agrees to help save his life. Nate calls Elena and lies to her by saying that he accepted Jameson's job offer. We meet up with Sully who tells us that the cross is being auctioned earlier than expected. We came up with the idea to cut the lights and steal it when no one is looking. We split up from Sully and he meets a familiar face named Nadine and finds out that Rafe is also here and that both of them are partners. Nate makes it to the power room, cuts the electricity, and we steal the cross. I pick up three combat trophies farming this one guy. While making my escape, I come across Nadine who asks for the crucifix of a fight and proceeds to beat me up until I give it to her. After taking a beating, we promise to give it to her and use the opportunity to get the upper hand but it backfires on Nate and he is sent through a window. We make it to Sam in the most convenient way possible Hi, how are you? and pick up another trophy for getting 20 headshots. We all escape in a limo and discover our next clue is in Scotland. Once we arrive, Nate and Sam go forward while Sully decides to stay on the plane. I grab a trophy for performing 30 vertical stealth takedowns. I also grab two collectible trophies. Now during my crushing playthrough, I try to do as many trophy challenges and in this section, I must not kill or be seen to earn the Ghost in the Cemetery trophy. I attempted multiple times and kept getting spotted and I was ready to give up until this happened. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, you should give me the trophy. Me? I was disappointed when I made it through the door and the trophy didn't pop up. So since I am a maniac, I restarted the chapter again. Catching back up to the cemetery, I grabbed another trophy. Come on. Where the heck is Sam at? Come on, 
come on. Let's go. I got the trophy. Next, I had to solve a puzzle under 10 moves. So While heading to the treasure, we overhear Nadine and Rafe arguing about her methods of blowing stuff up. And as, as soon as she leaves, Rafe is upset. We find a test of greed where we must only take one coin. And once we do that, we get a clue to head to Madagascar. And Nate believes that Avery was recruiting other pirates. However, Nadine shows up with her men and informs Rafe of our location. Sam tells her that they need the crucifix, and after one of her men grabs it, the floor beneath them starts to break apart. Nate and Sam escape on Sully's plane and plan to head to Madagascar. After landing the plane, Nate gives a call to Elena. Uh, postponed, actually. Uh, looks like we're gonna need maybe another 10 days or so. Stop the cap! Nate continues to lie to her about what he is doing. When we arrive in Madagascar, we see that Nadine's men are already there. I grab the trophy for knocking down every rock tower. We find what we are looking for but notice a recently lit cigarette and get interrupted by Nadine's men. While fighting them, I manage to defeat 5 armored enemies with melee only. After defeating them, we go back to the map we found and pinpoint 2 possible locations of where the next clue might be. Sam would go to a tower by himself while Nate and Sully go to the other tower to hopefully beat Rafe from catching up. While heading towards the tower, I get a trophy for interacting with a lemur. Once inside the tower, I get a trophy for collecting 50 treasures, another for climbing all the way to the top, and for taking a picture of Sully. After solving the next puzzle, we get a map for the next clue and decide to give Sam a call, but instead it is Rafe on the other line. He manages to hack our text messages and is heading straight to our location. We hang up and immediately call Sam and tell him what is happening, although he finds out soon enough as he is getting shot at. We leave the tower and get a trophy for standing still after the cutscene to a reference when there were technical issues when the game was being shown off before its release. The next trophy was to make 10 enemies drop their grenades. We hop in our jeep in hopes of catching up to Sam and with not many options left, Nate decides to hook onto the crane on the truck. While being dragged by the truck, I got a trophy for destroying 10 vehicles. Nate catches up to Sam but gets hit by a truck causing him to get stuck while it starts to go up in flames. As soon as we get out, the truck is waiting for us and Sam manages to get us out on his bike. We end up escaping from its destruction and leave to meet up with Sully and tell him the next location they are heading to. As they enter the motel, they notice a guest inside. It's Elena and she confronts us about what we are actually doing. Nate explains first by introducing his brother who she didn't even know about and gets upset that he lied to her for weeks and leaves upset. Nate, frustrated with the situation, tells Sully to keep an eye on her as he and Sam head to Libertalia. While heading toward the oh, island, no. I take a swim near a second ship and get three dolphins to follow the boat. Nate and Sam find where Libertalia is and get interrupted by Rafe and Nadine's men. We pick up where the game originally started in the boat chase and wake up on the island by ourselves. Shortly after, Nate falls, knocking himself out and wakes up to a message from Sam with a flashlight and decides to head in his direction. We link up with him and bring up the point for forgetting the treasure and securing a boat first to escape the island, but Sam says his priority is finding the treasure. As they are arguing, Nate notices a clue that they are heading in the right direction. Following the path led them to Libertalia. They enter a building and find that it is empty, so they decide to search for clues. But before I continue with the story, there is a trophy that I forgot to get, which is Peaceful Resolution. I have to make it through chapters 13 and 14 without killing anybody. So I replayed both chapters still on crushing because I'm a lunatic, even though I believe I could have done it on an easier difficulty. The main issue is in chapter 13 as there is no checkpoint in this section, so if I fail, I have to start at the very beginning. Multiple times I made it to the end, only to get spotted, but eventually I made it through. Chapter 14 was a bit easier as you are given many checkpoints, so I did not have an issue and got through it quickly. As soon as we enter chapter 15, the trophy is required. They noticed some Libertalia money and believe that the founders of Libertalia stole the treasure for themselves. They see a map on the ceiling which points them to New Devon. Nate and Sam climb to the top of a building where they see how to get to the treasure but are attacked by Nadine's men. We must escape quickly as the building is collapsing and afterward encounter Nadine. She has the upper hand until Sam jumps on her back and we manage to grab her gun but Nadine without a care in the world spears us through a door. We have our second fight with her, but this time with Sam, so a two on one handicap match. She beats both of us without a sweat and super kicks me through a window. Nate recovers and delivers a superman punch that sends all three through the floor. Sam manages to grab the pistol before Nadine and that is when Rafe shows up. 
Sam threatens to shoot Nadine, but Nate intervenes and grabs the gun. He comes up with a deal for Rafe by helping him find Avery's treasure in exchange for their lives and a cut for Sam's freedom from Alcazar. That is when Rafe informs us that Alcazar has been dead for a while and that he's the one who got Sam out of prison. He bribed the prison warden and Sam walked out the front gate and they both have been working together for two years looking for the treasure. You what? Rafe plans to shoot both Nate and Sam but we tell him that without them he will never be able to find the treasure. Rafe agrees but he only needs one of us and as he points the gun towards Nate, Sam blocks the bullet and pushes his brother into the water. We transition back to the night when we left the orphanage and went to find mom's stuff. We find her journal and get a gun pointed at us by the homeowner as she demands her belongings. Sam tells her that they only came for their mother's stuff and that the old lady says that our mother used to work for her and puts the pistol away. She gives us the journal and says that she will handle the police. So we are about to leave, she collapses and dies and with the police outside, we had to make our escape before getting pinned for her death. We leave the property and reflect on the night. They both decide to ditch their identities of being a Morgan and adopt the last name Drake. We go back moments after falling into the water and see that Elena is with us attending to our wounds and explain to her why we never mentioned Sam before. Elena tells us that she found us with the help of Sully and we explain to him everything that has happened. The next trophy coming up is Just Floor It, where I must drive away in the jeep with Elena and not kill anybody. Now attempting this while I'm crushing is brutal as the enemy would try to jump in front of the car and the fact that you die so easily. I failed many times but eventually I got blessed with a run where I barely survived and got the trophy. If you have been enjoying the journey so far, please consider subscribing and leaving a like as we take this nice drive. Nate and Elena are close to New Devon and look for a path but notice Sam is still alive with Rafe. While heading towards them, I get a trophy for defeating 1000 enemies. We find the skeletons of the founders of Libertalia and find out that Avery and two poisoned the other pirates, both of them now possessing all the treasure. Afterward, I get a trophy for picking up the final journal entry and for defeating 50 enemies without aiming. Making our way to Sam, we must escape a set of explosions and once we do, Nate is scared that something is wrong with her as she isn't responding but she is pulling off a joke. We head towards Sam but get chased by an armored truck and are saved by Sully and catch up with Elena and Sam. The three of us plan to get off the island but Sam insists on going after the treasure as they are so close. Sam comes to his senses and agrees with the others to head to the plane and leave. We get separated while heading to the plane and Sam goes after the treasure alone so the three of us try to get to him before anything bad happens to him. However, Nate goes to him alone and tells the others to get the plane ready once he brings Sam back. On my way to find Sam, I get a trophy for finding all journal notes and for finding every strange relic. Nate catches up to Nadine and Rafe as they are loading up some of the treasure and are arguing about whether or not to continue. Rafe decides to slap Nadine and she responds with a punch and pulls a gun on him but one of her men betrays her and points his rifle toward her. She decides to keep helping Rafe while finding the rest of the treasure. Afterward, I pick up the final treasure and head towards Avery's ship. As we enter, we see all the treasure and as we head deeper, Nate encounters Rafe and shows us Sam's lifeless body. Nadine shows up behind us, leaving Nate unnumbered. We give her our gun. However, Nadine decides to betray Rafe and takes his gun as well, leaving us trapped inside the burning ship. As Nate tries to help Sam, Rafe picks up his sword and decides it is best to spend his final moments trying to kill me. Here is where I go for the final chapter related trophy called Swordmaster, where I must parry all of Rafe's attack and not get hit once. Now in crushing difficulty, his movement is much faster so predicting his attacks was tough. The one benefit of this fight is that there are different phases so once I reach a certain spot, I could restart if I get hit and still get the trophy. After failing multiple times, I started to memorize his attack patterns and kept progressing through the fight. I go ultra instinct on him and lose the sword but Sam comes in clutch by passing it back to us. I die on the first attempt in the final phase but manage to beat him on the second attempt and give him the final blow. Finally, screw you Rafe, enjoy that treasure. We rescue Sam and are awarded the Swordmaster Trophy. We escape and leave the island on Sully's plane. Once we land, we say our goodbyes to Sully and Sam. Afterward, Nate finds out that he and Elena have bought Jameson's Marine with some of the treasure that Sam sneaked into Elena's pocket. They both accepted responsibilities of owning the Marine as the game fades to black. We are then placed in the middle of a Crash Bandicoot game and I go for the trophy for beating the high score that I managed to fail at the beginning of the game. We find out that the person playing is Nate and Elena's child, Casey. While we play as her in the epilogue, I grab the final optional conversation trophy. 
I am here seeing all the callbacks to the previous games and am just amazed at how much of a love letter this game is to the fans of the series. I'm ashamed that I never played this earlier as it is now one of my favorite games of all time. After a touching and emotional cutscene, the credits pop up finishing this wonderful game. Once the credits finished, only the crushing difficulty trophy popped up but I did get the other difficulty trophies. With the story completed, it is time to collect the remaining combat trophies. For the most part, all I had to do was to defeat them in a certain way and go for a 100 kill streak without dying. With the combat trophies finished, all that is left is to speedrun the game in under 6 hours and I'll also be going for the trophy to complete the game with a gun accuracy of 70% or higher as I only managed to get 43% in my first playthrough. However, if you add those two trophies, I would still need one trophy for the Platinum. If you remembered earlier in the beginning of that video, I mentioned that the Legacy of Thieves collection added a new trophy which is to collect all the trophies for Uncharted The Lost Legacy. After finding that out after being so close to the Platinum, I hopped on The Lost Legacy and grabbed all the trophies. Now for the speedrun trophy, there is a glitch where you can earn it in under 2 minutes, but I didn't feel right doing that so I went with the legit route of playing the entire game. For the speedrun, I added a timer on the bottom right just to see where I was at during the game and for the most part, I was fine until Sam decided to screw with me in this one section. After making it through that area, I progressed through each chapter. I was chilling until I reached the 5 hour mark and became nervous that I wouldn't be on the pace of beating the game. I finally reached the Wraith battle and since I was on the easiest difficulty, his attack patterns were so different that I kept messing up toward the end of the fight. I ended Wraith's life for the second time and skipped the remaining cutscenes and I finished with 30 minutes to spare. After the credits, the speedrun trophy and sharpshooter trophy popped up and I earned the platinum trophy for Uncharted 4. Thank you all who watched to the end and please drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this type of content. Click here to watch my platinum journey for the Uncharted trilogy and I'll catch you in the next one.